Greetings everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to see that how we can utilize an end-to-end -end approach for video classification. I have seen people converting videos into images, then extract frame from images and then add these images into recurrent neural network such as LSTM created recurrent unit or something like that. After that, they have fully connected layer for classification purpose. But this is not an end-to-end -end approach. Like it might be, but this is not a suitable approach. Uh, this suitable approach, I believe, for video classification is a 3D CNN approach. In this way, we are going to have 3D CNN to classify the video. But there is one issue we have found that when we have videos of different length, to create a batch, we have to have all the videos in that batch of same length. So one way is to do truncation, other, another way is to use padding. Truncation is more better because we are just doing classification and let's say if we have a video of 10 seconds, then we can make segments of 2 seconds, we can make multiple windows and segments. But how we can do that in a perfect way? So let's go to the library we are going to use. For that, we are, I am going to use Py, Facebook PyTorch video. This is a good package, but the issue is that it's a very newly born package. It has a lot of bugs. It is not that much highly maintained, though it is made by Facebook, but this is not a very perfect one. But to be honest, this is the only video based project which I have found and it's working pretty well if we do some changes in its code. It can take two input. One is the folder and other is, I believe, CSV file. For me, the best way to fetch the information to a data loader is in the form of data frame. For example, I have a data frame. The one column of data frame has path of videos and the next column of data frame has the classes of the video. So I have made two changes in the part of video code and here is the repository in which I have made the changes. The first thing you have to do is to download the zip file and after the downloading process has been completed, we are going to utilize this package in our repository. So I am going to copy this information and I am going to paste it into my folder. The next thing we need is the data set. I am using Kaggle data set to link of both the repository and the data set. You can find them in the resource section or in the description of the video. The data set is proposed in 2019 and it is also has a published paper and the accuracy achieved in the public paper is 88%. Though in the upcoming paper the accuracy has been improved and I believe there are more than 40 papers which have cited this one. So we have to download this data. Actually I have already downloaded this data. So let's go to the repository go to our folder and I am going to extract the package. After that, I am going to rename the package and remove this main set part. Okay. Now I will go to the my notebook and I have to import this package so I can use it. There are different ways to install the package. One way is to do, I believe you can Google it perfectly such as how to install github repository via pip so this is the way pip install git plus and here you will replace the path to this this path so this way you can directly install your this updated a repository to your system and other way is to download this repository using git clone or using manually then you can go to this folder via cd command and then you have to run this setup.py file in the terminal so this will also install the library in your environment but as i have already told you this repository is in development phase i i, I do not want to install it because i have to update it uh, like as soon the more update will arrive from PyTorch research or if I have to make more 
alteration and then I don't want to install the existing one and install a new one. So there is another way in which we can use this library for, the, for this notebook only. If we have another notebook, we have to write the same code so that we can use this library in that notebook. So that I am going to use this library or package, then I am going to do this path dot append and the firetosh video. To check whether the I can use this library or not, I can try from firetosh dot data import label video. label video data set okay actually it is firetorch video not firetorch okay here we can see that i can easily import this library let's say that if i restart this notebook and i am going to comment this line can we still use that no we can't use that because it say that no module name firetorch video it means that every time we have to use this library, we have to append its path in the system path. Okay, this will work for me. Let me restart and play the notebook again. And here we go. There are different ways I can import these libraries in the beginning or I can import them when I am going to utilize them. Let's go with the second approach and I am going to use them when I when they are required so i will import them when needed the first library is from globe import globe this will help me to import all the videos into a list and after that i am going to use pop pandas to create a data frame and there are two other libraries which are numpy and uh, matplotly actually i'm not sure if i'm going to use this but it's a good thing to import these libraries in the beginning because they are the mostly used libraries in the field of in the field of data science or AI. Okay, let's create the data frame. For that, I have to create a variable non violence. Let's call it non. And using globe, I can. Got all the videos of the non violence section, non violence which are not related to violence, and the other is called I'm going to call it violence VIO, and I am going to import the path of all videos which are related to violence. Steric mean import everything. Let's say if I do steric dot mp4, it means that only import the mp4. Actually, I'm not sure that all the videos are in the mp format or there are some other formats of the video. So I'm going to import all of these. The next thing I have to create the label. For that, let's say I am going to assign zero to the non-violence and one to the violence. Okay, this will do is that, let's see this part only. This will create a list where the number of zeros are equal to the length of this variable known. And as a list, which have one equal to the length of this variable while so i have a list of label having zero and one where zeros represent non-violence and one represent violence the next thing is to convert this into data frame actually i am also combining non-violence and violence list into one list which will here, but I'm not going to put it into a variable. Actually, I'm directly using it, but for the label, I'm putting it into a variable, which is label. So this is very straightforward. Now I am going to label these columns. So the first column name will be file. You can name it whatever you want. The second column name will be label. It's up to you, whatever name you want to give this. Now I am going to print the first five rows and here it says that panda is not defined okay you can see that we have the path of the video and we have the label of the video uh, the first actually first let's say let me also print the first 
uh, length of the videos let's say print non violence video the length is 1000 but let for the sake of clarity print it similarly for the length of non violence it is also 1000 as we have seen in data set but i'm just printing it for the sake of clarity so we have first thousand as zeros and the next thousand as one in the data frame. Now I am going to split this data frame into training data frame and the validation data frame. For that I am going to use scikit-learn dot model section import train test split and I am going to create a data frame, train data frame and validation data frame. and the number of videos in test set or the validation set will be let's say 20% and shuffle is true because we have unshuffled data highly unshuffled data so let's print the size of training data frame and the validation data frame okay it should be test size we have 1600 videos in training data frame and 400 videos in the validation data frame. 